Hi everybody. I hope you enjoyed our story, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie by Laura Numeroff. It was a fun story about feeding a mouse a cookie and all the adventures he goes on when that starts off an avalanche of fun things with the mouse to do. But you have to make the cookies before you can give the cookie to the mouse. So I'm going to show you a really easy recipe on how to make cookies with something you probably already have in your cupboard. They're called cake mix cookies. And to make a cake mix cookie, you are going to need a cake mix. It can be any flavor. It can be name brand, store brand, whatever kind of, of cake mix you want to make. This one happens to be a Betty Crocker one um, with French vanilla, but you can experiment with all kinds of different flavors. Um, because the boxes are a smaller size, this box is a 15 ounce box, you're going to need an additional quarter cup of all purpose flour. If you get a bigger box, an 18 ounce box, you cannot, you don't have to put the flour in. You can skip that step. You're also going to need two eggs. You're going to need a half a cup of oil and that's it. It doesn't get any easier than that. So the first thing you want to do is to mix all your ingredients together. Oh, you, oh that's right. I almost forgot. You also need to have your fillings, your add-ins. And you can have, um, we're going to do with ours today, we're going to do chocolate chunks and we're going to do M&Ms. But you can do anything um, that you like depending on the flavor that you have of your um, of your cookie mix. If you're using like red velvet cake mix, white chocolate chips are really good with that. If you're going to do uh, chocolate cake, then you could put like toffee bits in it or peanut butter, whatever you like to make in your cookies. So you want to take your cake mix and you want to pour it into your bowl. And make sure, boys and girls, that you've washed your hands first before you cook. I did that before we started filming, so we skipped that step. But make sure you wash your hands. And then please don't lick your cake beater. That's really not healthy. I know it tastes good. I know everybody likes to do it. But please don't do it. It can make you really sick. So there we are. There's your cake mix. And then we're going to add our flour. And then we're going to add our eggs. One and two, just like that. Get all the egg white in there. If you break eggshells into your dough, fish them out with a spoon. We don't want to eat crunchy eggshells in our cookies. And then you want to add the oil. If you have a mix master, you can run this through your mixing paddle um, until it's nice and smooth, or you can do it by hand. And when I was your age, I loved to make cookies and muffins by hand. I have fond memories of stirring batter bowls with my parents and with my grandparents um, and my sister when we would bake together. This is really kind of a fun thing to do. It's okay to be messy. Maybe your mom has an apron laying around you can borrow so you don't get your clothes dirty. But my children will tell you that the messier my kitchen is, the better the food tastes. So have a good time making a mess. See, just like that. So now you've got all your um, dried and your wet ingredients kind of mushed together. And it's almost smooth. This gets a little bit harder as it gets thicker, so you might need some help stirring this. And then the recipe said that for your fillings, you're going to need about a cup of your mixes. So we're going to add some M&M's, that's a quarter of a cup, and a quarter of a cup, here's your math for the day, a quarter cup plus a quarter cup equals a half. So we're going to put half a cup of M&M's in, and we're going to put a half a cup of our chocolate chunks in. There's one, that's a quarter cup, and another quarter cup, make a half. So now we have a whole cup of add-ins into our cookie dough. And we're just going to stir that all in nice and good like that. And get it all mixed together. It looks so fun and festive, especially on a cloudy, rainy day like today. We need a little bit of sunshine in our day here, even if it comes in the form of a cookie. When you have it all mixed together, you want to get a cookie sheet. Now, I have been married for 25 years, and these are my original cookie sheets, so they don't look pretty anymore. So we use parchment paper on our cookie sheets. And you just want to lay your paper down on the inside of your cookie sheet like so. 
And then you can use a spoon or if you have like a mini ice cream scooper or a cookie scooper, you can use one of these. And you want to just scoop out 12 cookies onto your sheet. And you can count with me. One, two, three, four. You want to make sure you leave a good distance, about an inch or so between each cookie because they will spread out as they cook. And then five, six, seven, eight, and one more row, nine, ten, eleven, and one more, twelve. Well, I got a little too much on that one. So we'll scoop some of that back up. There, now your cookies are ready to go into an oven. You want to bake them in an oven that's already been preheated to 350 degrees. So you'll need a parent or a caregiver to do that for you. And when it's hot enough, have your parent or caregiver put the cookie sheet into the oven on the top rack and let them bake for about 10 minutes. And while they're baking, you could read another book. I have a whole stack of books here that I'm thinking about reading here. And we've got several more by Laura Numeroff. If you give a dog a donut, if you give a moose a muffin, if you give a pig a pancake, and then many more that I'm going to hopefully read to you guys in the coming weeks to come. Okay, so we're going to go put these cookies in the oven, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back, and as you can see, the cookies are all baked, and I read a few books, so we got some things done. But now it's time to take the cookies off the cookie sheet and let them cool on a wire rack. Uh, make sure that you are letting an adult do this. I don't want any of you guys getting burned. Um, you just want to take your cookies off the, the cookie sheet so that they will cool for a good three to four minutes before you eat them. I have another suggestion for you is that you could go make a card. And um, when you're all done making your cookies, you could put a bunch of them into a bag or into a box and put it with your card and take it to somebody you know that is either an essential worker, someone who works at a hospital, maybe somebody who um, is running the, um, the paramedics, the EMTs, maybe a firefighter, somebody you know who has to go to work every day and maybe they aren't able to stay home and make cookies. And so that would be a nice gift to give somebody during this time. So here's your cookies and we're gonna let them cool for just a couple minutes and then we'll taste test one. And in the meantime, I could probably read another book, yay! I'll say, see you in a minute. Okay, and we're back. And I have three taste testers to try our cookies for us today. This is my production crew. They help us put together each of these videos. And we're really thankful for all the hard work that they do for each one. And so we're going to reward them with one of our cookies. All right, guys, take a cookie and tell me what you think. Oh, this one. Good, bad, or ugly. Mm. <laughs> I'll take that as a good. All right, excellent. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed our <laughs> hope you enjoyed our demonstration on how to make cake mix cookies. Scrumptious. I'm so glad. And happy baking. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.